What's going on? Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Live in the Tank with Keith Day on Aaron Harrison. I'm excited. You know, this has been an amazing week and have a lot to share with you. On this Fearless Freedom Friday, what are you being fearless uh, about right now in your life? For me, you know, yesterday was, was incredible. You know, for the first time, I stood up, you know, and, uh, and stood on a... Um, uh, a snowboard and surfed down a hill. Now, listen, guys, I've been shying away from snowboarding for a long time. All my buddies are all about it. I've watched some amazing uh, athletes have a lot of fun with it. And, you know, my thing was I was, I was always scared of my knee. And so I just never did it, you know, because I was afraid that I would fall and I would just injure myself. And I had to overcome that fear. And it came the day when my son, Right, my eight-year-old started to fall in love with that 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 skateboarding, snowboarding type thing, and so you know I was going out there with him for the last few years. He jumped on his and he started to get it, and so yesterday I tried it for the first time and I realized that the fear was all in my head, and I started having fun again. It was incredible, and so what are you fearless today? That's what we want to talk about: is being fearless and creating that freedom in your life. And uh, so all those are on chalk. Oh, Lloyd, what's up, brother? Wow, Lloyd, I haven't seen you in years, man. How have you been, brother? Nick, what's going on, brother? Lisa, welcome to the tank. Trevor, what's going on? Heather, what's going on? So we're talking about being fearless, right? You know, really stepping out of our comfort zone and, and, and having the confidence that you're going to achieve it. You know, it was funny. When I was going down the hill yesterday, there was moments where I felt like I was unbalanced, right? But I just had to focus. I said, I got this. I had to focus on my center of gravity, had to lock my core in, you know, lock down my, you know, my, my quads and my hamstrings. And so once I did that, I said, wow, like this is really, really, really easy if, if we just focus on it. If I let my fears overcome, then boom, I was going to bust my tail. So it was pretty cool going through that. So what's going on, Lisa? Awesome. Tracy, what's going on? And so as we wait for Keith to come on here, I just want to help you to recognize where are you being fear, uh, fearsome or are you being fearless in your life right now? That's what we want to talk about is where are you overcoming um, your fears because honestly that that's where the that's where the magic happens is when we can push through and uh, I was listening to a motivational um, video this morning and it was talking about how difficult it is to show up at 100% and give 100% every single time. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel that sometimes, right? I, I step into something and I'm like, man, you know, can I be 100% today again? Can I do it again? Can I do it again? Can I do it again? And the answer is always yes, but the belief isn't always a 10. And that's where we have to challenge ourselves. We have to say, okay, well, where is this, this, this missing link, right? Where is that belief escaping from? Because yesterday I was at a 10, today I'm at a nine. Like, how, how, how does that work? And so we have to recognize those fears, right? Recognize those individual fears that just kind of creep in and give that, 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 that appearance of doubt. And that's really where, you know, we start to realize that we're starting to not play at 100%. And so once we're able to recognize those fear points and the things that we may be scared of or, you know, just, um, you know, expectations, right? Which, which obviously we know that aren't the best way to, to set out, you know, and go out there doing something with an ex expectation set, right? You wanted to set intention. Why you're going out there and doing it and really di divorcing the outcome. And so, Go ahead. Let me see who, who's who's being fearless today, and what is it that you're overcoming? Come on, guys. We got some live individuals on here. What's up? All right, we got Keith coming on here. What are you being fearless with? What are you being fearless with? This this is the this is the key question, and it can be so difficult at times. We know, but we have to. Hear, and when when are we going to become become fearless? What is going to take for us to become fearless? What's up, brother? Fearless Friday. <laughs> I love it, man. And so you yeah. saw me being fearless yesterday, brother, going down the snowboard, man. That was I mean, so much fun, bro. I, 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 I saw some of this. I mean, is that part of it? I didn't go down, though. I didn't go down. I don't think that was fearless. That was reckless. They call that reckless. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was the most fun, Keith, that I had in a long time. And the coolest thing about off. it. It, it, yeah, it was. And you know what? It was the extra work that I was doing on my legs. It was the extra core work that I was doing because I found when I started to feel like I was unbalanced, all I had to do was lock down my core, get a little lower, and it worked. And I was like, wow. And it was like, wow, I couldn't stop going. And, uh, and it was cool because, you know, Elijah started seeing it. And he was like, you know what? I can do this. I can do this. And so he kept trying and trying. And he got further and further down the hill before he fell, which was really, really cool. So I had yeah, a lot of fun, man. It was cool. 
No, it's definitely that is definitely a fearless move that I saw you doing. And the first thing I thought was I was like, oh my God, Aaron, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? But look, we don't that that's the whole thing. That when it it's it's so it's such a blessing when you realize what you're training for. And when, what we talk about it oftentimes is the difference between a workout and training. A workout is temporary. A workout has has this beginning and an end to it. It's the diet version of training, right? It's the, it's right. the shorter version. People go, I got I to gotta go do a workout. Everything right. we do when we sit down, when we stand up, when we shovel snow, when we, when we hold up a, a, a phone to do a broadcast, everything we do is part of our training. And we, we right. train for life. People often ask, hey, what are you training for? What are you going in? Hey, man, there's a definite difference. I'm not being – look, I'm an ass. That, that's a compliment for me because that's who I am. But, but I'm not being a wise ass by telling you, right. no, we train. We don't work out because that's the difference. A workout – my definition of a workout is that's a diet. That's what people do when they go and they, and they run on the endless this, – this hamster wheel. And, it, and it's – when you're working out, you're literally bartering – with the fitness gods you're 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 looking for hey if i do this i'm gonna get this one result and because i want it i'm gonna get it and i'll work hard and i'll get whatever it is when you train there is no end a workout is a barter a diet is a barter and and it's when you train that that is you're training for life you're training for for the things that when you jump on that snowboard it wasn't even snowboard that was a sled when so that when you jump on a sled and you want to connect with source right? You jump on that sled so you can feel like a kid again and you nail yeah. it. And you're like, yes, that's why I train. There's no fear so here. Cool. And the key to freedom to, to that, to that fearless freedom, Aaron, is understanding that, that fear, like Bishop T.D. Jake says, fear is a liar. He talks about it. It's a liar. Fear <laughs> is a liar. It's just like chocolate. Like we talked about on Valentine's Day. Chocolate's a liar, right? That you eat that chocolate so you feel good. Nah, that's most chocolate, I mean, we know that there's there's some chocolates that do have that effect intentionally. They have a health right. effect. There is some health benefits, and that's the intention of it. But most chocolates, it's there to, to fool you into thinking that everything's right. going to be okay, right? Some people use right. wine. Some people use alcohol. It's a liar. It's all lies. You have the ability to do it yourself because it already exists. So right. we got to talk about why fear is a liar in most the most times, whenever you react towards something, the majority of those times, that reaction is fueled by fear of something. Most often, it's fear of loss and connection. And so if you think mm -hmm. back to all the times you reacted in ways that didn't really, it wasn't you, didn't feel good, and you, and you really got, didn't get the reaction you wanted from somebody else, if you ask mm -hmm. the question enough, where did that come from? Where did that come from? If you peel it back enough, it's going to come from the fear of loss. And so the, the amazing thing is, as I, as I went through the, the series of steps that we do, that, that miracle morning that I do with my daughter, and I prepare my household for this, for this amazing energy so that she can leave the house and do what she, she gets to do and, and be a student, and I can leave the house, and I get to do what I get to do as a, as a student of life and then also as a teacher. So as I, I saw the, the energy shift because things were different, Right. There was a my wife had a schedule change. She didn't have to go to work today because they they had some roads closed because of the storm. So she was in the mix now. And how am I going to deal with that? How am I going to work with this? Let me learn. Let me see what dynamic this brings, because the ultimate goal here is to spend a, a ton of time, an abundance of time with me, my wife and my daughter in the same place as long as possible. So let me yes. practice, right? That's how I looked at it. I looked at it, I was like, all right, this is, this is a practice. Well, how, how are we going to do this? Yeah. Right? Am I going to be a buffer that lets people off the hook? Or am I going to be a buffer that I can teach from and learn from? How can, I, how can I gain an understanding? Not gain control. Control isn't what I wanted. I wasn't looking for certainty. I wanted to gain an understanding so that I, I, had, a, I had clarity. That's really what I was looking for, clarity. So my wife and my daughter had a discussion based on something that they had agreed upon it, it revolved around like folding clothes, I think, or turning something inside out and one person doing work and then the other person not feeling appreciated. So it, it ended up with my daughter upset. And so at the, at, I am at the same time, Aaron, the gift we have is that we can be a teacher 
and a student in the same right. exact moment. When you can understand that you are the teacher and the student in the same exact moment, and we pass it back and forth. It's kind of like the conversations we have, Aaron. We constantly passing it back here. Now it's your turn to teach. Now it's my turn to learn. Your turn to teach, my turn to learn. It's really what we're doing. And so I was doing that with my daughter, and what, what she was doing was she was crying. She was upset. And I said, I said why are you so upset? Why, you know, why, why this shift? And, and, and you know how to change your state. You, you went in your room to change your state, and it didn't work. She goes, yeah, because I lost my mommy. I was like, wow. How many times as a child does that, does that feeling or misinterpretation of loss, especially of a mom or a dad, affect how they grow up and the software that's being laid down in the process? And so I said, well, let me, I said, why do you feel that way? And I, I didn't say, why did it happen? I want, I, didn't, I want to make sure that I wasn't focused on this extrinsic thing here, the ego piece of it. I said, why do you feel that way? And, and, and that, is that a feeling that you like? And she's like, no. But what happened was she, she interpreted it as I lost the version of my mom that I love the most, the one where she's happy, she's caring, mm -hmm. she's always there to help me, the one that she desires, the one that she adores. She felt like she lost that version of her because when my, the first thing my wife did when she got out of bed was then go into that what, what happened and so she was right in a way, but she wasn't totally, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a complete understanding of what really happened. And so that's why I wanted to ask her that. And I said, I said you know, why do you feel that way? And, and then when she, when she told me why, I said, well, do you feel like it's your responsibility to, to are you, do you feel like you're responsible for the way she feels? And she said, yes. And I said, Quinn, we work, we work a lot. We work really hard to understand that we are not responsible for how somebody else feels. It's always their choice. It's always right. something that they can turn on or off and they can go through the triad and change it and then identify what they need to do to get in or get out. But it, it's never your responsibility for how somebody else feels. Now, can you do things that, that af, af, can you notice patterns of what you do and the energy you bring into a place or out of a place? that affect how other feel, others feel? Yes, but it is not your responsibility on, to, to allow them to feel that way or not. That's the difference. You have the ability, but it's not your responsibility. And that's the, right. that's the key. So she was crying and upset because of her loss, her fear of loss, that she lost that version of her mother. And so I'm like, hmm, how, how can I now put this in such a way where it can be a lesson without telling her she's wrong. Because I think that's the key too, is we also, we also resist sharing as adults, maybe not as much as children at first, but eventually they do because, they, because when you're told you're wrong, nobody wants to be told they're wrong, right? right. And so we can, be, we can be jerks when we get into that fire hose moment, Aaron, when, when we have so much knowledge and, and we, know, we know so close to what is right and, mm -hmm. and we straight up tell people they're wrong you know, that, that's abrasive. So right. talking people through it so that they can solve the problem instead of us in our selfish, egotistical way, looking for that dopamine hit, allowing them to solve it, guide them, be the guide. So I kept saying to myself, be the guide, be the guide. You're not the hero. You're the guide, guide her through this process. She, I guided her through and in less than two minutes, she was like that snapped out of it. And she was back to bubbly, my, my bubbly daughter. And you know what it did? It went from loud footsteps in the background, every step being loud. You know those loud footsteps that people that we love take, right? <laughs> you know what they mean without saying anything? Those footsteps silenced. When, our, when we shifted, they shifted. It shifted the, into energy of the entire house. And I was like, wow. 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 Yeah. wow. That's, that's cool. the lesson today. And, I'm, and I share that with you, Aaron. And the way I share it is because I know you, you go through, because we share a lot. You go through some of the same things. So it's, it's crazy when we, when we go through that. And then I flip it onto YouTube and uh, I go back to, to, to YouTube. I go back to where my messages, a lot of my messages come from. And a message from TD Jakes found me. And he talked about, are you, are you gaining strength? Or are, are, you, are you strengthening or straining? Are you being strengthened or strained? And if you're being strengthened, awesome, keep doing it. If you're being strained, find a way out. 
find a better fuel source? Uh, have you has uh, something been presented to you that you've totally turned away and not given the opportunity and even understood why it came to you? And are you in there fighting this fight, fighting this battle, and thinking it's right. you when somebody's he said when when Moses was standing on the hill with his arms up, controlling yep. the battle, giving you the strength to get through it. For a lot of people, that's 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 the Lord, that's God, right? God's standing there with you. He he's he's the one, it's his fight. You are right. you are right. assisting him in the fight. But oftentimes right. we own the fight. So I'm like, oh my God, everything we what we talked about this week was brought in and put into this nice little package. I'll I'll drop the video in the in the thread here. It was all bottled up and it all ended with this with this fear concept. And my mind was like, boom. Boom. Yeah. And I was like, this well, you know, how I we live. Right. And and I listened to that too, Keith, as you said that to me. And and I I I remember when I heard something say how important it is that we that we be thankful for what we are right now, yeah. where we are, and the things that we have. Because even if we want if we want more, right, then we're not going to appreciate what we do end up getting because we don't appreciate what we currently have. And so yeah. when, when T.D. Jakes talked about, you know, it, it is not your war. And if you are, are strengthening or if you're straining, that's where that lives, right? Because if you're straining, it means that you're constantly, constantly digging for more and more and more and more. And you're never really satisfied with what you've actually accomplished, right? But if you're strengthening, that means that you're leaning on what you've accomplished, right? You are happy and you're grateful for what you have right now. And now you're using that as fuel and strength to become more and be, and be more for others and create more value. And so that at any point, you can turn it off in regards to the actual work and actions and take a moment to reflect and say, I am so thankful for where I am right now, having it be March 9th, right at 12, 15. I am so thankful for what I have right now. And I can easily keep going on and working and working and working and working and working. And it, there'll never be an end. And that was something that was so aha ish to me when I listened to that. Yeah, he was like this. You know, drop, mic, drop the mic. Drop the mic. It was, <laughs> like, it was wow. crazy. I was like, I, I can so do that. I literally can so do that. It's just like going to the gym. I know. And it was funny because I got a text message from a friend of mine who said that she literally watched somebody do the incline bench for a complete hour. Nothing else, just incline bench. And she asked me, she goes, the whole time I was in the gym, that's all the person was doing. And is there any point to that? And I said, well, only if they're doing an incline contest and seeing how much they can do. But the thing is, is that I, you know, we can both see ourselves working out, training, and working all day long and loving oh, yeah. it, right? But really not, you know, but really not really reflecting on the strength and the things that we've been able to accomplish along that way that has allowed us to train that much more and has allowed us to be that much more. And so I think it's important that everybody realize, you know, when you, um, when you understand whether or not you're strengthening or you're straining, right, you will find the balance. Just like me standing on that, 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 that sled yesterday, right? I found my balance by, by really go. literally figuring, figuring it out and taking my time and being present at the moment. Because if at one, any point I thought of anything other than what I was doing, that was going to be it, right? That was going to be it. And so as, as we go into being fearless, right, and this being a fearless Freedom Friday, I want to ask you, where does your freedom live, right? Where does your freedom live? Because a lot of times we get caught up in that box, Keith, of being a stressor right? And a strainer. And we go through it all day long through the same routine and we just beat ourselves up constantly looking for more. I want more. We deserve more. I got to get more, 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 right? There's no freedom in that. That's like begging to get out of jail all day long, banging on the doors and the gates and saying, please let me out. And if I can just keep pulling on this gate, eventually it will break. And no, it won't. <laughs> there, 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 is, there is no breaking point to it. It will always exist. And so I ask those who are watching, we have quite a few people on here. Tracy O'Malley, what's going on? The legend. Awesome. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us. And where does your freedom live? Right? And are you in alignment with the definition of that freedom? Because that's where you have to start each day. Right? Where am I going to find freedom today? And where am I working from? Am I working from the stressor? Right, the straining, or am I working from strength? Am I growing into that freedom so that I can wake up purposeful, right? And I have a path, and I know where I'm going and why I'm going there, and I can care less about the outcome because I'm present. The outcome is right now. Me being able to do what I'm doing is right now is where my freedom lives, and, and that's something that, Keith, you know, it took a long time for us, bro. I mean, it took me you know, over six years. Oh, man. You know I mean? And I'm still working on it, and there's moments where I snap. 
right? And I get all caught up on, you know, anxiety and stressing and straining. And, you know, I'm like, hold on a second. What am I doing? What am I doing? I got to reflect. I got to look back at, you know, what I've accomplished so far. Take that in, fill that gratitude bucket up. And now when I go back into some actions, things start happening, right? Have you ever had that, Keith? What happened when you all of a sudden, right? You let go of the pressure. You let go of the outcome. You reflect on the gratitude. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the wave comes in. It's like, whoa, where did this come from? And, and, it, and it helped me really. I was actually finishing cleaning my car yesterday. And I had noticed that I wasn't spending as much time in my Bible as I was last month. And so, and, and it really wasn't a much reason behind that. It was like, I was, I, I just, I just adjusted the time, right? And, and it kind of slipped my mind. And so I would fit it in, right? I would get, go through my scripture and, you know, I'd always read maybe, you know, a page or a page and a half or whatever it may be. And then I kind of limited that now. And all of a sudden I started seeing that stressor come back and that straining come back. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What am I doing? And I said, aha, I, I, I stopped going to the station. I, I started running my tank all the way to an E and I started running on E versus running on a full tank every single day. And so, you know, Keith, where has that shown up in your life where you noticed that you stopped going to the gas tank and you, you, you've you gotten custom, accustomed to running on fumes and then all of a sudden the stressor, the straining starts coming in and you have to readjust back to the gratitude. Where has that shown up with you? And then the wave comes. It's like amazing. Well, well for me, Aaron, it, it the more and more I understand of what we're really doing here, when we look at we look at that authentic living, right? And, we, and we, what, we, what happens here is the closer we get to alignment, it doesn't, it doesn't mean what we, what we used to think was, was true. It doesn't mean that it wasn't true at the time. So a lot of times when, when people state something and they state it with, without a doubt that it is the absolute truth, it doesn't mean that, that when you find out that it may not have been the absolute truth, it doesn't mean that now you can't rewrite it. It means that that was your truth then, that version of you, that level of belief that you had at that moment, that was your truth. And, it, and if it was in alignment and you were, go, you were living from intention, then it, it, that was your absolute truth at that time. It is now, if you are growing, and as you grow, you deepen your roots, you deepen your understanding of things. So as your roots deepen, you get closer and closer to source you're identifying an even deeper truth. So that was a layer of the truth and you peeled it back and found another one. And so for me, when I think about that fear or I think about that, that emotion now, because I, what I understand is everything we do is, is, is about emotion. It's wrapped around emotion. It's wrapped around a feeling. And the very end, that is all we have to take with us is those feelings and experiences. So what I looked at and I said, wow, what is the number one thing that I have that I have had? What is the number one thing that I have owned that I have taken ownership of that has stopped me from experiencing the life that I and and the the feelings that I that I look most forward to? I said, what is it? What am I taking false ownership of, or what am I owning that I do not that is not mine? And so, at first, at the surface, it was these thoughts. Right? It was the thoughts that I thought were in my mind. And I listened to Tony Robbins and he told me it was the mind. And that made so much sense to me. So I said, all right, let me look at that. Wow, you think I'm the only person that ever thought my knees hurt? You think I'm the only person that ever thought I wasn't good enough? You think I'm the only person that ever thought I needed more love and connection and to do that I had to serve people? I had to help people to get it? You think I'm the only one? And I started to realize, wow, those aren't even my thoughts there. I borrowed them. And, I, and here I am owning them, thinking, finding valor and honor in the ownership. I'm like, yeah, but it was false courage because those weren't mine. And so that's where it started. And it got dug deeper and deeper. And then what I understood was, okay, now that I have this, this clarity, how do I now own what is truly mine? And, and how do I, and, and here's the cool part. I remember when I grew up, I used to always make rules for games. I was the guy that got the games going and I made all the rules. Now, I was smart. The rules I made were always, were always in favor of me and my team, favor. Right? right? So I made the rules, and I loved it. I was so good at it and pissed people off. Where do you think I got the concept, all I do is win? And, and I <laughs> love winning, right? So, so I used to always make these rules. But then when I got into adulthood, I forgot that. I forgot that I get to make the rules. It's my life. 
These are my life on my terms. Those are my rules. That is, that's who I am. And so, right. so he showed me a way that if I simply list all the things that I run away from and do not like that I've taken false ownership of and all the things that I want to run towards and I want more of in my life where I look forward to abundance and prosperity and I list right. them out and then I rank them and then I follow that with rules. Now that's a system. Now I've looked, I've run from systems. Any time that I'm being forced into a corner or forced to conform, I am out. But what I didn't realize was systems were made to serve. And it's all right. how you view them. And if they right. come from intention, then they will serve you. And so I said, huh, okay, that wasn't my thought either. Now I, now I get it. I started making rules. And the number one rule I made was for pain. When, it, when am I truly in pain? When can I own this pain? And so I wrote pain up as this immobilizing, totally, totally uh, immobilizing feeling of, of um, extreme discomfort that never goes away. I use the word never because it, it's so far-fetched that you would be totally immobilized in an extreme feeling of discomfort that never goes away. Because there's always a possibility, if you live a limitless, live a limitless life, that it can change. And I understand that. So with that understanding, I knew that it was almost nearly impossible that I would be in a state of extreme discomfort that would never go away, and it was immobilizing at the same time. Because I understand that if my heart's beating, I'm not immobilized. Because something's moving. Something's mobile inside me. So because of my depth of understanding, I wrote the rule for pain so that it would be nearly impossible for me to be in that state. So anytime it even comes into my head, I go, oh, no, that's not pain, because the rule for pain is this never-ending uh, uh, immobilization and an extreme discomfort that never goes away. I'm like, come, huh, awesome. I'm not in pain. Let's go. Because I used to say, I used to say this is going to hurt or this is going to cause me pain and discomfort, so I cannot do it. I cannot compete. I cannot race. I cannot do this. There's all these cannots. And I'm like, why am I saying all these cannots if I'm a limitless being? It's because of this right. thing called pain. That was my first one. I went all the way down. I think it was 15 of them, Aaron. I felt so free. My chest wide open. My shoulders are back. My depth of breath is getting to my stomach. My brain is on fire. My whole body to my right. fingertips got on fire. And I haven't felt it since because I rewrote my software and then I installed it. But, it, but I had to go figure out a way to make that happen. But it was all inside me. I, I had, didn't have the clarity and understanding around it to make it work. And that's where I have, that's where I have claimed my freedom. Wow. You know, and, and it's so apparent, right? And you can see it, you can hear it, you can, you can, you can feel it as you're saying that Keith. And so, you know, I want to just check in real quick, Lisa. Yes. You know, you're so looking forward to abundance and prosperity. Listen, it's already there, it's there, right? There's nothing to look forward to. You have it right now. And, that, uh -huh. and that's what we talk about, right? You have it right now. And it's just now, it's just now your turn. Okay, your turn to write out what that looks like. Okay, write out what that looks like. So you what can visually like. see it. What you know, it feels yes, like. there you go. Thank you for correcting that. What it feels like, right? Write out what that feels like because honestly, it's going to be different for everyone. It's going to change day by day. That, that, that's the cool thing about it, right, is that it never gets old and it never gets easier. Okay, and, and, and the cool thing about the, the, the whole process of growing, right, is defining, defining what feeling do you want to feel 24 hours, right? You're 24 hours. You have it. The feeling of being well rested, the feeling of being excited, the feeling of being happy, the feeling of being, you know, uh, achieving, right? The feeling of being successful. All these things we already, we already have, right? We just have to define it. And just like Keith says, define the rules, right? You have parameters, you have rules, you have things that, you know, are contingent upon something else. And so define what that looks like. Don't let anyone else define your rules, or else you will always be behind the eight ball, right? You be it and decide, right? This is my freedom. This is my prosperity. This is my abundance. I have it within me. Now let me tap into how that feels like, you know, having all of that. So now I can go ahead and I can define how I'm going to play, right? Because it just goes right back into, you know, playing the game of football for me. You know, when the, when the X's and O's are, are, are written out, right? And we see the play executed on paper. Yes, it make, it looks a lot easier than it actually looks in person when you're on the field. However, once you have the idea that it can't be stopped, it will not be stopped. It will be yeah. you that stops and becomes limited. 
right? So now we start talking about that freedom. And so as you go out the rest of your day, I want you to really define what that freedom is for you, right? What does that feel like to be free, right? Inside your mind, inside the actions that you, that you, that you take care of all day, right? Because it doesn't ever get easier. It just gets clearer. Just like Keith and I talk about all the time, seek that clarity, right? Circulate that energy, Find what the necessities are to allow you to be who you are at the greatest point in your life. Because you know what? Now is the day. Right now is the time. Yeah. You decide. You make the rules. Let's make that happen, Keith. Let's go out there and help people be free, man. Oh, yeah. So for, for all those out gonna, there, I see I'm not going to go out, Aaron, I'm not going to go out and help anyone. I'm going to go out and give people permission. There you go. I got to plug my phone in real quick because I don't want this to die. So, you know, <laughs> giving permission to people, right? Hold on. I'm sorry. All right, there we go. So, you know, giving permission to people, and, and that's really cool because even this morning, you know, my son has always had a tough time getting up for school, right? And it reminds me a lot of myself because I would keep kicking and screaming <laughs> always to the point my dad comes in with water splashing on my face. And that still didn't do it. It just made me mad, right? It just made me want to stay in bed, right? But now I got a bed all full of wet water, right? So anyways, so this morning, right, he got up. He got up. And I said, come on, Elijah. You know, come on, Elijah, get up. And so he had asked me to play chess yesterday, right? So we were playing some Scrabble, and then, you know, he wanted to play chess. So I was like, all right, because he loves playing chess. So I, I was like, all right, well, you know what? Tonight we're not going to play. However, you know, we'll, we'll play tomorrow, right? So he had no idea, and I had no idea. We ended up playing before school, right? So he got up, routine, you know, did what he had to do. He sat down. We had time, right? He's eating his breakfast. And you know what? I make a move on the chessboard. He starts making his move on the chessboard. And all of a sudden, we allowed each other permission to have a fantastic Friday because at that point there was no stress. There was no anxiety. We allowed ourselves to be present, right? I could have easily, you know, been all worked up and, and kind of missing the point, but here's the key. We allowed ourselves permission to be, and that's what we want to encourage everybody to do. We want you to, to invite you to, to, to welcome others, the permission to be free. And if you have someone in your surrounding right now in the office at home, wherever it is, right? Just take a time out with them. And help them define what it feels like to be free. And you may have some resistance, and that's going to come along. However, more times that you bring that question up, the more times that actually starts to become more vivid in their imagination and what they see. And as, as they can see it, they can feel it. And as they feel it, they change. All right? And so all of you guys that checked in, Jack, what's going on, brother? Thank you, Lisa. You inspire us as well. Everybody that chimes in here, this is all really? about being together as we, as we overcome the biggest obstacle of life, is identifying that we're great. <laughs> and so for the hundreds of thousands of individuals out there that will see this on replay, continue to share, continue to like, continue to go out there and comment in here. This is a living being. And so we want everybody to have a fantastic weekend, define your freedom, and be great today, guys. God bless y'all. Thanks, Keith. I'll talk to y'all soon, man. Yes.